Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, I'll show you how I use a wet blend technique with contrast paints to blend two colors on this Shroud Queen miniature. In this video, I'll go through in real time how I blended a purple and a turquoise for this Shroud Queen miniature. You'll see how to get a nice natural fade between the two colors, and this is perfect for a tabletop ready, battle ready standard miniature. I used this technique on all my Knight Shadow Stalkers and I was really pleased with the effect. And if you want to see how to paint the Shroud Queen and some of the other members of the Warband in full from start to finish, then please check out my other videos and I'll put a link in the description below. In this video, we're going to use just two contrast paints, and that's the Shyish Purple and Terradon Turquoise, and then we're going to blend those together with a wet blend technique. The model's already assembled, and I used Citadel Plastic Glue, and then I gave it a primer of the Citadel Colour Wraithbone paint, and the brush I mostly use is the Army Painter Wargamer Character Brush. I also use a smaller brush and one very similar to this one, um, but you could do this whole video tutorial with the Wargamer brush. Now we're going to take two paints, the Terradon Turquoise and the Shyish Purple, and we're going to have both pots open and ready to go at the same time. And I'm starting with that Turquoise, and this section here, to the left of the model, her left, I'm going to paint it all in that Terradon Turquoise. This is a beautiful colour, really rich and deep. And I'm going really thick, so I'm putting quite a lot on and pushing it into the areas where it meets that gold badge that we'll paint later on. And I'm covering all this area here, making sure that gets a complete coat of the Terradon Turquoise all on that side. So it's important to have both pots open and ready to go once we move over to the other side of a cloak because we'll be doing that wet blend. And I've let the video go in pretty much real time so you can see that there's quite how much paint I'm putting on. It's quite a lot once we get to the wet blend stage. But even here, the brush is loaded up and it's really going on quite thick and then ending that brush stroke again where I want it to build up and pull and wiping it away from the areas that are going to be a bit more raised. And where there's too much paint on the brush sometimes, to wick it away I just take my brush and I just twist it across some kitchen roll and then that takes away the excess paint and moisture and then I can use the brush then to wick away the excess paint off of the miniature. On some previous members of the Knight Shadow Stalkers I used that Zenital Prime and I used a, a lighter purple and I blended those together across that, that kind of prime effect of black and white. I didn't like it as much as doing it straight on the wraith bone here so I much prefer this way of doing it and using a darker purple on top of that really pale, even prime underneath. It was good to practice that and also practice this wet blend on some of the models that aren't going to stand out as much because it's pretty intimidating to take this big piece of plastic here and just dive in and do a wet blend on it. So it was certainly good to practice on two, three, four other models to get it right and get that paint recipe how I want it. And now we're getting really close to the point where we're going to start blending that purple in. And you can see there's loads of paint here and it's really starting to pool in the creases, but it's already coming away from the raised areas. And now as I turn it around, this is where we're going to start doing the wet blend. So I put a lot of paint on here. I mean, you can just see how thick that is. Really thick, loads of paint, and it's pooled quite a lot that you can see there. So now this is the area where we're going to blend. So now I move into the purple and I take a, a load of that. I haven't cleaned the brush off, but I'm taking a load of purple and then I'm pushing that into that pool of the Terradon Turquoise. And then I'm just letting it sit there for a minute and kind of mix together and bleed into each other. And then I'm gently pushing it up first into the little creases and then I'm starting to add more and more purple and then gently start pulling that pool of paint down and then we get a nice natural fade and those two contrast paints have done all the work for us. And then again, I'm just flicking a little bit up, pulling it down again, and then spreading out that pool of mixed paint between the turquoise and the purple. And that's gonna give us a nice natural blend. And again, guiding it, always guiding it. You've got quite a little bit of time here to play around with this paint, push it where you want it to go. Use the tip of the brush to drag it through the two colours as they start to blend and then guide them up into the creases first of all and then a little bit above the raised areas where we're going to get the highlight and then you can see there I'm just dotting my brush and kind of almost mixing it 
in all different parts of that blend just to get it nice and smooth. And as I get down to the purple again, I dip it back in the purple paint, get loads of paint on there and then start dragging it down. And you can see I'm putting lots on and then pulling it into the shadows, ending that brush stroke in that nice V-shaped um, crease there and letting that paint pull. And that's going to give us a really beautiful shadow. And I'm just going just with purple and I'm just going to keep painting and keep going all along the cloak now as it twists around. And the key is with the contrast paints, once you get that blend how you like it, leave it alone and don't keep going back to it. Once it starts to dry and you try and move it around, then you're going to leave some kind of stains of colour behind and that's not cool. So yeah, once you've got it how you want it, then leave it. But you do have enough time. You can see here we've been going a couple of minutes already and we've got lots of movement in the paint still and we've got lots of time to get the effect we want. I found with the contrast paints it's just a, a case of getting used to them and the different colours because some of them can be very different. This dark purple, this shyish purple is very different to the paler Magos purple so you get completely different effects and one will look terrible whereas one will look really nice. So it's just getting used to the paints and how dark or light they are, how much of that base wraith coat you can uh, wraith bone you can see coming through and then once you've practiced it a couple of times then it's just trusting the process trusting the paints and letting them do the work for you but these two the pterodon turquoise and the shyish purple are just made for each other they go together so well and that blend was so kind of quick and easy to, to do between the two colors it just suits the technique really well so if you wanted to do a blend like this with an airbrush this certainly could do that um, but and you could also do it in stages of layering but for me the level I'm at now that's a bit beyond me so this contrast paints is perfect and um, I think with a, with a practice on a couple of models or some plastic sheets anyone could do this with the contrast paints once you practiced it a couple of times and got used to them and my goal here is to, to produce something to a tabletop battle ready standard that I'm happy with, that I've had fun doing. And my goal is always to enjoy the process and um, not take it too seriously, but just get some results I'm happy with and that give me confidence to move on, try other techniques, but also produce something that I'm pleased with. OK, now I've gone back to the turquoise and you can see where I've taken that purple up. I've just stopped a little way from the end and now I'm starting to apply the turquoise and work my way back towards that purple so we're going to get another little blend here so we've got a nice blend at the back and then I want a little blend here where the two meet and so now I'm going thicker and thicker as I get close to that purple and adding more turquoise and then we'll do a blend just as we did at the back with the turquoise and purple so I'm mixing the two together there and now I'm going back wiping my brush off a bit and then I'm going in with purple and just putting that in quite thick where the two colours are going to blend again. And now this is more of a kind of back and forth, dotting it in, spreading it around, just as we did before, taking our time, going with that process, and just letting the two contrast paints do the work for us and mix together in a nice natural blend. So this is going to leave us with, on the left side of the model, on her left, you're going to get a nice colour of turquoise running from the top of the cloak to the tip at the bottom there, and then that purple is going to go round circling her completely and I think it's going to leave a really nice look to the, to the miniature. And now I'm playing around with it, adding a little bit more paint, dotting it in, making sure there's not too much in those recesses, because on this bit at the front, there's quite a lot of um, kind of dips in it that are going to hold a lot of paint, almost too much. So I'm just making sure there's not too much building up and making sure the blend goes nice and smooth. And then you see the little holes there. I'm just wiping my brush off on the paper towel and then just poking it through the holes just to remove that paint so that it doesn't dry and clog the holes up. And then I'm also just keeping working it, keep moving it. And you can see this has been a couple of minutes now and there's still time to move the paint and work it around. But we're getting to the point where I need to start leaving it alone now, especially as it starts to dry. And there we go. You can see there's quite a lot of paint there. But that's going to dry and leave us with a nice smooth transition between the two colours. And on the top, the same thing. We start to see the blend working and you get that nice line of highlight running down too. And with all the front of the cloak done and the back, we're just going to do the underside now. And for this, I'm just taking purple and I'm going right in really heavy with the paint and going to paint all inside just that purple colour nice and thick. And um, that's going to be our main area of shadow. 
with a brush like this loaded with paint now the, the bigger brush uh, you've got to be careful not to get any on the other pieces of the model especially the ones that have been painted already if you do make a mistake and get it on some of the areas that haven't been painted you can just go over with a little bit of white or um, wraithbone base paint and touch those up before adding the contrast but if you go over the areas with contrast paint that's going to be more difficult you're almost going to have to go back a stage cover that with wraithbone and then go back in with some contrast paint again and uh, make sure it blends in with the color that's already there so really take your time here on this stage uh, here we go this is almost dry now and you can see we've got a really nice effect nice kind of natural blend and i think for a tabletop ready standard i'm really happy with this and i think the contrast paints have done a great job and here's our finished miniature our shroud queen all painted dried and based i'm really happy with the result that these contrast paints have given us we've got a nice blend there that works really well and um, i think for a beginner level this is a perfect way to paint a battle tabletop ready miniature let me know what you think in the comments below i'd love to hear your thoughts and if you decide to paint using this please share your work it'd be great to see it and if you've got any tips you want to share that's cool too and i'll put a link in the description below so you can check out the full video on how to paint the shroud queen and other members of the warband with the contrast paints I'll put links to all the paints and brushes I use in the description below and there'll be affiliate links but it doesn't cost you anything extra in fact it's going to save you up to 20% with Element Games and any sales made through those links I get a small commission and that helps me develop the channel and um, I really appreciate the support so thanks so much. I'll be putting videos out over the next few days for these other miniatures here and if you're watching this in the future they'll all be up already so take a look at those if you want to and I was really happy with how this technique produce that nice blend and that was my favorite thing from this whole experience with the canine shadow stalkers here thanks so much for watching the video i really hope you found it helpful and please like if you like it subscribe for more content like this and don't forget to hit that notification bell to join me next time on tabletop skirmish games <laughs>